Good afternoon, everyone. This is TJ Muleman with Standard Co. with another MetaBase tutorial. I'm calling in from very, very chilly Seattle, Washington. It's the end of February where we like to get one last little cold snap before spring comes in three months. Um, that's why I'm wearing this jacket. Anyways, let's talk about MetaBase. Uh, release 0.42 came out about a week ago, and it's full of really cool stuff I'm really excited about. And we'll do a tutorial on each of the major pieces of the release, but today we're going to talk about models. Okay, so what is a model, right? If you're a computer programmer, a model is a representation of a database table or a data set. Okay, it has a lot of um, things that describe that data set or that database. Uh, it might have descriptors. It talks about what kind of data type it is. It talks about ways you can interact with that model. Um, and and Metabase has emulated something very similar to that with their re latest release models. Um, and let me walk you through how to create a model and how to utilize a model. I think it's really exciting. Um, so first, uh, I'm, I'm in here and they've created a new interface here for uh, creating a question or a SQL query or a dashboard or a collection. I really like the fact that they had a collection here because adding a new collection is something we do all the time. We're very careful about how we uh, organize our questions and dashboards and it used to be kind of buried. Now it's really easy to get to. Thanks, Metabase friends. Um, but I just created, I clicked uh, add a question. And so I've already picked my starting point um, or my data set. And I'm going to pick, uh, let me pick, here we go. Let me find this thing. Country to zip, county to zip view. Um, this is actually a view in our database that we created in standard data, which is our data warehousing platform. Um, and, and a model is kind of like a view in that allows you to kind of bring together multiple data sets and give people who are going to be building um, questions or dashboards a good starting point. Uh, so this question is actually a, a, a good example of what I want to show you. So um, the way you start with a model is you go ahead and get the data the way you want it, okay? Um, and you go ahead and save this as a question. So the, it's a little bit um, clunky, if I'm, if I'm being honest, that you first start by creating a question. And let's just go ahead and call this county, county to zip view two. So I think I've already created one. And I'm going to put this in our demo dashboard section okay so uh, i've created that question i don't want to do anything i don't want to add it to a dashboard yet so up till now i've done very nothing that original i've created a question i've saved that question that's all i've done it's still not a model but to turn it into a model you'll see the question i have up here and you click this little drop down and you'll see these different kinds of um uh, things you can do with this question. I think this interface is new. I'm not familiar with this interface. Um, so this allows you, these are all the different things you can do to a question. And you'll notice this one little uh, three uh, square blocks. This is how you turn a question into a model. So you can go to all of your historical questions and turn them into models. In this case, it just started with something new. So let me click turn into a model. And there's these little kind of help, helpful tips, tips there. So turn that into a model. And it doesn't really fundamentally look all that different, right? Uh, I can edit the query definition, which is basically what got us to this point. So I can change the underlying filters or summaries or the columns I want, but I, I don't really need to do that. Um, what I really want to do is customize the metadata. And this is where I think the model gets uh, pretty neat. So let me click on that. And you'll notice that this is a new view. This is all new stuff up here. And what you can do is you can actually select um, what data type you want. Uh, I'm going to move this back over here. Um, you can select what data type you want. Um, how does the thing appear? All kinds of different things. So let me just pick um, population. Okay. So the, the name that the, the end user is going to see is population. And then the description, I think this is really important. Uh, you really got to fill this out. Um, this is the population of the zip code. Okay. And then what's the column type? And this is also important. So what's happening with a SQL query is it's not attempting to uh, map it to a column. It's just sort of using the underlying um, data type, but you can actually customize the column type. And I highly recommend you do that. And I'll show you why here in a moment. So we're gonna pick, um, this is population. So that's a quantity, uh, there we go. So pick quantity and you'll see down here, this column should appear in table and details view or details view only. I'm just going to leave it as detail 
and display as a text. There's nothing to link to. Uh, formatting, I can change the formatting if I want to. So, um, you know, the style is normal. This is not a percent. This isn't, you know, uh, uh, scientific or currency. I can leave it kind of as it is. Separator style. All these things are pretty common. They, they were formerly part of the query editor, and now it's part of the model editor as well. So I can kind of leave that alone. County name, um, let's say this is the name of the county. Population density. Uh, let me go ahead and actually pick this one. This one's important too, because this is an actual name. And what I'm gonna pick is a category, uh, which will allow me to do a couple different things. Category, okay. Uh, and then last but not least, and we'll leave the other ones alone, population density. Now this one's a little, you know, if I were just looking at this, would I understand what population density was? Maybe, maybe not. So this gives me the opportunity to put a little bit more context in here, um, depending on size, geographic size of count of, of the zip, how dense is it? Okay, you could put whatever kind of description you might want in here. And uh, this also is a quantity um, and we'll leave that alone. Okay, so to review what we've done is we've taken a couple of these, these columns and we've now given them a name. They it kind of inherited the name. Uh, a description, which helps. Uh, population, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a description and then the column type. So we've created basically metadata about the view of data. Um, so now that we've done all that, we can go ahead and save that. So we'll save those changes, okay? And now we're viewing this uh, again as a again as a model. So when I hover over the column, you'll notice that there's no like we didn't change anything for zip, but for population, you'll notice my description is there. And because I gave it a quantity type, it does a quick average, min, and max, which is really, really handy. As somebody who's sort of observing this data, um, I might say, oh, well, this is kind of interesting. I can say here the minimum population is 26 residents of some county, and the maximum is, or some zip, and the maximum is 66,000. Population density, um, county name, you'll see there's 150 distinct counties that we're dealing with. Um, this now allows us, uh, if I'm, if I'm kind of coming into this model, um, someone before me has defined the way I should look at this data, which is really, it's a good starting point. Now I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, I've got a little bit better sense of what I'm dealing with. And I can use this to derive a, a, a subsequent question from. So, you know, for example, I can still kind of, you know, click on um, the drop down buttons to see the other options that were always there in the question. So I can pick distribution, for example. So I can see my distribution by county and I'll move that out of the way. Um, I can now visualize this, right? I can visualize this as a bar chart. Move that again, sorry. Um, so basically I took that model and I said, okay, well, I see that county is a category uh, and I see there's 150 distinct counties. This is in Georgia. Um, and I can now see the distribution. So I took that, I started with the model and now I've created a brand new question and I'm going to call this uh, uh, county to zip uh, or just counties by distribution. Let's call it that. Okay, I can save that as a question and I can now add it as a dashboard. So the takeaway here is that models give um, the administrators of a metabase instance, or maybe like the super users, an opportunity to define ways to look at data uh, out of the box without giving the end user, like relying on the end user to figure out all on their own. So I really like models. I'm really excited about them. I think they're a sort of equivalent to a view, but with a lot more firepower and a lot more uh, interesting um, opportunities to get to the underlying root of data. So we'll follow up in the coming weeks with uh, more MetaBase uh, follow-ups on release 0.42. But for now, this is the biggest part of that release, models. You can also find it on the MetaBase website uh, under the model section. Uh, if you have any questions about how to use models, if you want to talk about MetaBase, feel free to reach out to us at standardco.de. That's standardco.de. Thanks so much.